live. Fuck it, let's just all this shit live. Hey guys, um, so surprise, surprise, we are doing. <laughs> we tricked you. We're coming to see Dungeon Lord Four. Do you feel tricked? Oh shit! Oh, shit. Hold on. Um, I I know that won't be a disappointment for most of you, uh, <laughs> because I I know most of you are fans of Dungeon Lord, because it is amazing. Um, Jeff, I do have a question. Yes, I'm seeing Dungeon Lord three here. I'm not seeing four in the Google Drive. I'm not looking in the right place, perhaps. Um, or is it Dungeon Lord? A B O or one R T S. Okay, grazie. I'm sending it through Discord. Okay, okay. so uh, yeah, we'll be doing Dungeon Lord Four tonight instead. Dungeon um, Lord. Ah, damn it. Did I? I'm so sorry, guys, that I seem to fail at Sound Booth Theater Live so often lately. It's like um, you're, it's, it's becoming your shtick. Yeah, it's becoming the way I just run it's the It's a show. good thing that all of these books are lovable. So it's like yeah. one lovable book we're not doing tonight. We'll do it later. And, and instead we've got this other lovable book we're doing. That everybody's just gonna. Yeah, so I'm hoping that Hugo will Hayes. join us. You can I, do no wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that Hugo is going to be joining us. Uh. I need to, what I need to do is rebrand this whole thing as a uh, dungeon Lord afterwards, after the fact, I feel so stupid guys. Um, but we are looking up things to actually uh, narrate for this one. It wasn't prepared because we weren't, we, we don't have the uh, author with us now. Although, you know, we, him and I worked out that today would be the day i just got today and friday mixed up with the authors so he didn't get his uh so yeah we don't have the scenes that he wants us to do and but i i'm finding them because i've narrated half this book already i know the good parts i just needed to find them and i think that chapter nine is going to be one of the good parts who all do we have um, on here so far gf uh let's see we got Sari Gimmons. Oh, hi. We got Sarah. Adam K. Hi, Sari Gimmons. And we who got else? Benjamin Wagner. Oh, hell yeah. Um, and Jeff Morris. So who else who who else is out there? I'll go ahead and put up the uh the the cover of this book because it's a pretty dope cover. His his covers usually are and Sorry that this uh, program is such a blunt instrument. There is no way for me to change <laughs> where the picture shows up. So it's just kind of like plastered over our faces. Um, but that's okay. You only have to look at it for a second. Uh, the cover is really awesome. They all have this ominous uh, monochromatic look to them. And slowly, Ed keeps getting more powerful through the series. And he seems to be making more and more chaos with the special effects around him each cover so as you can see things are ramping up oh, yeah. um, but did you uh did were you able to download the book i've downloaded it and sent it to my uh kindle now i'm in the pro in the process of taking my ipad off of airplane mode and going to my email to retrieve it fiji film is here thanks for coming fiji film sorry we're we still have set up to do but it's it's happening and uh Hasn't registered his mic yet. Okay, so he is here. No. Is it? Is Hugo here? I don't see him. Okay. Okay. Said, okay, that's weird. You guys, look, I've got a monkey in my cup. A monkey in your cup? Wait a second. Let me look. I'm like, in, oh my goodness. I took it off of my back and put it into my cup. Um, That is... That is a risk you're taking there. I know. Having a monkey. I don't know if it's any better in my cup than it was on my back. We're not. Sorry, guys. We're not reading Nygmas today. Uh, we're doing Dungeon Lord. Stop I changed it. the name of the stream and everything. I'm so sorry, guys. We're just, we're almost ready. I'm wait. I'm still waiting for my thing to arrive. Oh, look. I can look into my sent messages and find it there.
Pancakes. Downloading. Yes, I'll do the pancakes for you just for st sticking around with us while pancakes. we work out our stupid technical difficulties. I want pancakes. You can't have any. No. The answer is no. But it's <laughs> Halloween. Is it Halloween? No. What's up, New Hades? Thanks for it's coming. Halloween man. time. Hi, New Hades. We're, we're just about to start, man. We're we're, we're, we're about to start waiting. Dungeon Lord Four. Yeah. Not you... Nigmas online. All right, not Nigmas online. Annie, can you tell? Okay, so this is what maybe the fourth book you worked on with us. Yes, the the, dun dungeon the fourth Lord. Dungeon the, the Lord. Second, no, the first, the first. But the, why I, do I, mean, I the, have? Yeah. Why do I have it, such a like the fourth the fourth audio book you've done with Sound Booth Theater Live? Because you you have like half the female characters in the first book, and then I was like, dude, you're killing it too much. Let's do two more. Let's just give you the whole female cast for book two. Um, I'm sorry, Jonathan Campbell. It, that's happening Friday. That's happening Friday. I got the schedules mixed up. Um, crap. I need to hold on. Okay, so Nygmus is happening this coming Friday, is that correct? This coming Friday is is the plan for Nygmus. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, Annie, what I was going to ask is if you could tell people about the first time you did the first Dungeon Lord. Uh-oh, is, is she gone? Um, sorry guys, I'm trying to juggle hosting this and talking to Hugo uh, at the same time. I'm, I'm waiting for Annie to come back. Annie! Where did she go? There she is. And is it happening okay. at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on Friday? Yes, that's the plan. Okay, so I was, okay. right before you left, I was setting you up to host for a second while I um, go talk to Hugo over email. Okay. But uh, could you tell us? Could you remind us about um, Dungeon Lord, the first Dungeon Lord, and your experience doing the Spider Queen? Yeah, I mean, the Spider Queen was literally the first Sambu Theater character that I that I played. It was, was I also I think it was the first. There was a creepy little girl. There was the cockroach girl, but I think that I played the spider first. Did you? Did you do that at the same time as the last warrior of Unigaya? I, I think I did. I think I might have done it in the same trip. Okay. Okay. But uh Yeah, I mean I'll all the Amphorus will be forever. Um I I mean there's nothing like your first. You always remember your first, you know. Uh -huh. My first was Amphorus. <laughs> Spider Queen. Yep. And um, and it's never the same. It's never quite the same. It it's different, you know, but it's never the same. It's never the same as the first. Yeah. Jeff coached me. We had a good time. That was a very exciting time for me because I had just said that I wanted to become a voice actor out loud. <laughs> not too long before that. And then sort of like cosmically in in cosmic perfect perfect cosmic timing. Jeff came to one of my gigs um, in Kansas City, and he said, I think you'd be good at character voices, because I had been doing all this long-form improv, and I've been doing really silly things and weird things with my voice. And he was like, do you want to come audition for my, uh, for my audiobook company? And I was like, yes. Yes, I do. And the rest was history. It's been it's been a long, eventful journey. It's been a long and arduous journey. Jeff didn't know at the time that I didn't know how to turn on a computer. <laughs> um, I. <laughs> well, I had already planned to do all the computer turning on it. That's anyway, true. That he would, so. yeah. Thing, and then things just got out of fucking control, and somehow I ended up with <laughs> my own booth, <laughs> punching buttons. Um. I have to get water before we get started. Are okay. you ready for you ready to entertain? You know, I, we might as well just get started because Hugo is for some reason having a lot of trouble getting on here. Yeah, I had some um, trouble too. Okay, I'm gonna get water, but then I'm ready. 
Okay. I'll be right back. I don't know what else to do, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a I'm a fucking sound booth theater live fuck up. Um all right. So we're gonna get started on chapter nine of Dungeon Lord Ancient Ancient Traditions. I don't know how far you guys have listened through the series, um, but to, at the beginning of this, uh, you know, things are getting really crazy as far as the uh, the base building aspect. Um, he's basically got an entire city to take care of now and an underground railroad. And so there's uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. New characters being introduced. We finally get to meet some other dungeon lords, and we'll we'll meet a couple in this chapter. And I think this chapter is gigantic. So uh, let me find a good keyword for you to search, Annie. Okay. You guys, you see this mark here on my forehead? I don't see a mark. It's just like a, it's just, it's subtle, but you get to see, I can, I can see it. <laughs> okay, what? I thought you were going to tell a story about the mark on your No, 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 no. No, I was. Um, <laughs> It's not that fun, but I just figured it'd be more fun than watching you scroll around. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I burned myself with a curling iron. A curling? Oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking curling. <laughs> like, wait. The... That motion is not no, something I no, understand. Like, like the... Oh, okay, the game. <laughs> no, not, because not I still down start, only half of my brain still hadn't gone away from like my version of curling iron. So I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> no, no, I'm thinking I'm thinking of the sport. Yeah, yeah. Curling. It's like, aren't those cold? But... I mean, I did, I did try that once in my tweens. It wasn't, it was not a good experience. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it to other tweens. Okay. Um. So <laughs> you got burned on your face. I'm yeah, sorry. this time it was my face. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. Okay. So let's start at if the two seats. Search for If the Two Seats. This is in Chapter 9, about 24%. Oh, there are the Columbians. Now I see everybody. I had had it on private chat. Okay, what what were you saying? Um, We're, we're going to do If the Two Seats. Just search for If the Two Seats. Yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, we're inappropriate people. Oh, um, sorry. If we're not the... really sorry. That's just, it's no, we're not sorry at all. Really. We're not sorry in the slightest. We're gleefully unsorry. That's our secret sauce. Gleeful unsorriness. <laughs> if the two seats at the end of the table were vain. Yep. Veins. <laughs> yes, veins. Okay, so veins is going to be a character that you're voicing. Okay. Um, she is. I uh, not I Bailey um. She is going to have the same accent as Levy, but oh, she's older. Um, she's more cold Vains. and brutal. She's like, okay. she's like uh, a definite warrior. Um, she's a dungeon lord, and she's super evil, but like principled. She's like Thanos evil. She's like that kind of scary, kind of like uh, controlled... Uh, um evil yes controlled calculating calculating um, calculating disciplined uh, disciplined yes um and she's just she's just obsessed with being the best of the best out of the dungeon lords so that's one of them there's another dungeon lord that's like actually kind of the, another uh female dungeon lord who's actually going to be played by uh dory sax She's been uh, she's been cast for a few of the ladies in Dungeon Lords, so you won't be alone anymore um, in voicing the female parts. Uh, Dory Sachs will be playing. I have a partner in crime. Me. Yes. Uh, what's her name again? Uh, Zorander, Lady Zorander, and she's also going to be playing a villain near the end, and a few of the side characters I'm giving her for practice and stuff. She's a she's she's a really talented young lady, so I think that she's going to do well with us. Uh, but you know, we'll see. Um, and Annie is yes. still going to be playing like the most major female characters, so nobody worry about that. 
Um, Everybody stop panicking. Yeah, no, Nobody don't panic. panic. Don't panic. Annie's still the most important. I'm people. still the star. Don't yeah. panic. Yes. I mean, Levy's gonna, if Levy's going to be in here, Annie's going to be the star of the show. So. Um, okay. All right. So we're going to meet a few different dungeon lords here. All right. If the two seat, oh, sorry, let me set up, the, let me set up the scene a little bit. Okay, so there's a dungeon lord party. Lady Vane's throws a, a banquet party thing in order to get everybody to start talking about uh, this event that's coming up that all the dungeon lords are getting ready for. So. <clears throat> if the two seats at the end of the table were Vane's, that meant the nearest dungeon lord was a champion of Talzamore as well. This man was tall and strong, with long black hair collected in a ponytail. He had a scar running sideways all along his face and ending at the left side of his neck. Intricate geometric tattoos ran from his forearms and disappeared up his sleeve. He wore a simple black shirt with a wide open neck. That meant the two dungeon lords next to Ed and Alder's seats were Corgorons. And if people don't remember this, um, Ed... Uh, basically pledged loyalty to the god Corgoron um, in book three, who Annie played as. Corgoron. The snake, the big snake, remember? Big snake lady, seductress. Yeah. They seemed young and were busy oh, gossiping, god. and they barely glanced his way. Ed's first impression was that he would have rather had the Tal Zamora's dungeon lords on his side for the endeavor. The endeavor is the thing that all the dungeon lords are getting ready for. Or at least the burly one next to Sanguine. Those two seemed like the ones that had seen the most combat. Then again, impressions can be deceiving, he thought. Most dungeon lords kept to the clique formed by their dark patrons, but the companions were free to talk among themselves. Given that letting their minions roam free was the best way to garner information without having to socialize, the dungeon lords allowed it. Well, what now? Alder asked, glancing around the table. All this back talk going on. Oh, all this back talk going on makes me feel like they're chatting about us. Hopefully, good things, right? Maybe about how well I chose our costumes. Actually. Okay, I need to tell you more about this character. This is uh, <laughs> so. This is Zorander, who uh, Dory Sachs with the nice, high, cute, squeaky voice is playing. Okay. So okay. she's a relatively young dungeon lord. She uses her charm a lot. Uh, she's very gossipy. Okay. But she's younger. <laughs> All right. Act, let's try it actually again. Actually? The dungeon lady next to Ed interjected, breaking away from her whispering with the other dungeon lord. Those suits are nice, but last time I saw one, my grandfather wore it. I wouldn't call them costumes aloud, though. It comes across as if you don't belong here. Perhaps we don't, Ed said. So far, despite the show of luxury and power the Lothians had displayed, the gathering reminded him more of a high school reunion than a meeting between the Dark's finest. Despite the legends and the Inquisition's fear-mongering, everyone here is only human. Ed thought, it makes them beatable, but also very dangerous. The dungeon lady offered her hand his way. Ed caught it clumsily a second before it would have been rude to leave her hanging, pressed like Levy had taught him, then let go. I'm Lady Cassandra Zoranda, Zoranda. The dungeon lady said proudly. She wore lots of makeup had her auburn hair in a complicated style, and her fitted dress made it clear she intended to compete with the Flesh Lord's companions in the looks department. The handsome man next to me is my companion, Ma- uh, Mas- Ma- uh, Maza- Mazer. Mazer of Devonshire. His lordship, to your right, is Lord Lor Lurus of uh, House Steros, who took the mantle a year ago. Edward Wright. Ed told them. My friend is, uh, uh, Radal of Devonshire. Pleased to meet you, he forced himself to add. I am a Lothian, Alder added hopeful helpfully, darkening his voice for absolutely no reason. Lord Steros was a kid, 
If he were 18, Ed would have barely believed it. As it was, 15 was a safer bet. He looked confident, though, and his character sheet revealed a swordsmanship skill of improved ranking. He had clearly been training from a young age, and at this rate, in a couple of years, he'd be able to wipe the floor with Ed in a duel. However, he had barely, he had barely more than 200 experience points, which he had used to buy spellcasting, power attack, spring attack, and a couple of minor life improvement choices. I know who you are, Steros told Ed, barely going through the motions of the handshake Ed offered. Ed could have sworn a shadow of jealousy had crossed the young man's face when Zorander's attention turned away from their chat. Fantastic. Exactly what we need, Ed thought. Korgoron, what the hell were you thinking? One sec. All right, um, let's see. There's a bit of narration here. Would you mind uh, taking over narration for just a sec while I keep looking for... Sure. You know? Zorander's character, sh Zorander's character sheet was better. She was a palatial courtier, trying courtier, courtier, trying to disguise herself as a vapid gossip. Her mind ranked fifteen, but her spirit was ten. Such a difference between mental status, uh, such a difference between mental stats, usually meant a lack of common sense. Her talents were advanced spellcasting, to Ed's delight. Along with a few, along with a few from the sneak talent tree, with some from the persuasion branch finishing the build. She had 500 points in total, which could mean combat experience under controlled conditions, or that she had sacrificed others on her way to power. The older dungeon lords around the table had more points on average. The Ember Dungeon Lord had a bit under 2,000, so he had done his share of fighting. He was a force to be reckoned with. The next Dungeon Lord was the Man of Bones next to Sanguine, with 1,500. After that, the character sheets ranged from Steros, 200 at the lowest, up to about 1,000. Still, Ed had amassed around Ed had amassed around eight hundred points in only three years, or had it been four already? If he survived another decade, without a doubt, he'd easily pass two thousand experience points. These people had been born in Avalius, following object following objectivity's rules, farming experience and skills ever since they could walk. Sorry, these people had been born in Avalius. An Avalis, okay. an Iva and Valis, following object Ivalis, following objectivity's rules, farming experience and skills ever since they could walk. <laughs> okay. Um let's let's skip ahead a little bit because it keeps talking about stats. And we'll hit a meta line here. It starts with Lady Zar Zorander, are you done? Are you done reading character sheets? Lady Zorander asked politely. Ed blinked and realized his evil eye had activated in a very obvious way. I hope you're satisfied with what you saw. For one, I'm glad to have those 800 points working with us and not against us. There was an undeniable hint of flirtation in her tone. Steros fumed. <laughs> I can do better. <laughs> <laughs> Experience points are not all that matters, he said dryly. Courage and wit are more important. A brave man with little experience points can defeat another with many, provided the dark favors him. And the dark favors the bold. In my experience, Ed said, speaking, bef speaking before he could contain himself, the dark favors no one until the fight is over. And then it claims the victor's win was its plan all along. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking of Heron, but the scandalized look Zorander gave him said she and Steros had gotten a different meaning entirely. An uncomfortable silence extended between the three. Zorander's companion, Mazer, turned to Alder. So you are from Devonshire as well, he asked clearly trying to distract the conversation away from Ed's lack of tact. Ah, uh, yes, Alder said. Devonshire was the nearest village to the dungeon where Levy had been born. 
beautiful place, isn't it? Very pretty trees. His smile wavered a bit. <laughs> Indeed, said Ma Mazer, looking glum. A shame for what happened to it. Alder hurried to mirror his expression. Yeah, terrible. Just terrible. Mazer turned to Zorander. My lady, would you mind if my friend and I make the rounds after the, after the feast? Since Lord Wright is our ally, I figure we minions can work to the, together as well. Splendid idea, master. Mazer. <gasps> Fuck. Splendid idea, Mazer. Zorander said. She whispered in Ed's oh. ear. <laughs> Good idea, Mesa. She, she whispered in Ed's ear. Mesa is my spy master. He has never been to Devonshire, but is probably hoping your minion, Ra Radal, can cover for his <laughs> gaps in knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Radal. Good call, Ed whispered back. So, it is true, Stero said loudly. Lord Wright, you are from a faraway land and have no idea about the Lordship's traditions. He gave Zorander a knowing look that she didn't return. Who did you have to kill in, in whatever backwater place you are from to convince Corgoron to grant you your mantle? Or did you eat the heart of a dead dungeon lord you found lying around like in the, that, widow, that old widow's tale? Hmm. He asked obnoxiously. Perhaps four years ago, Steros' attempts at angering him would have worked somewhat. But nowadays, Ed was a couple spirit points wiser, and he found he really didn't care what that guy thought of him. Lord Steros? Zorander chided him. Where are your manners? According to my sources, Lord Wright comes from another world. He was brought here by the boatman himself in the way the Light used to do to find their champions in the times of old. This makes Lord Wright a hero of the dark, deserving of our respect. His scrambling towers are our best chance to destroy the Heligans once and for all. He shall share them with us after the endeavor is over. Won't you, Lord Wright? <coughs> Alder coughed and whispered in Ed's ear, <coughs> Someone wants to get inside your tower, I think. He nudged Ed's shoulder obnoxiously. I meant that literally, though. She wants the towers. Just a friendly morning. <laughs> I know, Ed whispered back. Just saying, Alder whispered. It's not like you've got monk-like spirit around women. It may be hard to hear, but as your chronicler, it is my duty to call it, call it like it is. How kind of you, Master Radal, Ed said aloud. Oh. How kind of you, Master Radal, Ed said aloud, to let me know my... Shoelaces were untied. <laughs> Alder shrugged and exchanged whispers with, Ma with Mazer. The two chuckled. Anyway, Zorander went on as if nothing had interrupted her. Oh, anyway, you come from another world, and you haven't stopped fighting since your <clears throat> arrival. What sights you must have seen. Back there, you were a mighty warlord, weren't you? That must have been why, Ka why Haran chose you. I fixed computers and wrote code in my free time, Ed said. Zorander nodded knowingly. Ah, a crafter of spells. I'm someone of a magical research. I'm something of a magical researcher myself. Only as a hobby, of course. Oh, we should spell formula. Oh, sorry. We should exchange notes. There's this very challenging spell formula I'm working on with a set of Kolkata arrays that refuse to integrate the way the book says they're supposed to. <laughs> I think that's Kolkata. Kolkata. I I, this totally Kolkata. made up. Kolkata. Kolkata works well. Kolkata. Enough. I think it was Kolkata. I just, I have a terrible memory of these pronunciations. I'm terribly no, sorry. The, this is the first time anyone's ever said it. In, oh, in the good. whole book series, so I think it was a good enough attempt. She trailed, off. <laughs> she trailed off. Ed realized that the conversation around the table had died. Mm. Oh, if the rumors are true, the Dark is so happy with your performance that Haran brought us another world traveler. I only wish we had him on our side at the endeavor, but perhaps we can still enjoy his loyalty. 
After all, you two have the world in common. Ed narrowed his eyes, recalling the dream where Corgoron had warned him about Charon's meddling in the endeavor. What are you talking about? As an answer, Zorander waved at the stairs raising next to the chimney. Sorry. A servant announced, Honorable Lordships, please storm for your hostess, Lady Armis Vines, Terror of Ross, Enemy of the Light, Champion of the Great Amphitheater for the Eighth Time. Enough, called a woman's voice from above the stairs. Doom of this, killer of that. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. Okay. Let's let's try her again. Enough. This yeah. Enough. Um so yeah. Should I be crotchety but, old? Like enough. Doom of this. No, not crotchety old, that. But but okay, so you do this thing. So this is Levy's voice that you're using. You do this thing with her voice, there's like this certain um core rough texture in there that's just like that brings her adorable level like skyrocketing, you know. And that, so we need to get rid of that. We, enough. We, enough. Yeah, yeah. We need that. Doom blood. of this, killer of that. Yeah. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. There we go. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. Enough. Doom of this, killer of that. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. Okay. Let's let's get rid of one more thing. Okay. There, there's like this curve to some of your vowels. Um, that I think we should straighten out just a little bit. Doom of this. Killer of that. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. Yeah, yeah. So that, because... So that, more flat. Like, just as yeah. far as, like, not even with my vowels, but just my cadence. Like, keep my voice more flat. <laughs> a, a bit more... I, I think right about that level is probably what we want. Enough. Yeah. yeah. Doom of this. Killer of that. We all know my titles. Let's get yeah. on with it. Better, better. Um, so what we're what we're trying to do is just get the cuteness out of your Doom eye. of this, killer yeah. of that. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Yeah. I, I'm I'm digging it. All right. I'm gonna try really hard not to let the cuteness creep in, but that's just yeah, gonna be well, really I know it's difficult up for you, not. But um this is this is why we're doing this. This is why this you need is my challenge. Yeah. yeah. Veins strolled down the stairs. She had the look of someone who had grown tired of everyone's shit a long time ago. Her dress was a fine Lothian cut, but she looked wrong in it, and Ed suspected she felt uncomfortable in anything but armor. Her body was a ma- Oh! <gasps> look who it is! Yes! Finally! Yes! <laughs> yes. That took we a while. have Hugo Huesca here. So, hey, everyone. I'm so sorry for the- it's 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 totally my fault. I would have told you about this a long time ago. I, yeah. I know we scheduled for Monday, and I I was emailing Noah Barnett this weekend talking about Sound Booth Theater Live as well, and so that's why I confused you two. And then again, like the like five minutes before the stream starts, I look back at our emails and I notice, oh shit, that was that was Hugo, not Noah. <laughs> that we was talking to about Monday. So um, we're we're set now. Sorry, everybody that I tricked into coming in here. Hopefully, it's a pleasant surprise for you. I think it will be, since most of you uh, who hang out in the Sound Booth Theater Live Facebook group are fans of Dungeon Lord anyway. Oh, I hope. Um, that's nice to hear. But after after this stream, I'm going to like re redo the thumbnail, make sure your cover's <laughs> on there. And then uh, another thing that I think that we should do is have, like, there's a Drinking with Charles coming up on Sunday or Saturday. Oh, oh interesting. I don't know yeah. if, my, if my liver can handle that, but I will certainly try. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to try and get Hugo on with us so that we can all talk to Hugo some more. Um, but, okay. So what, time is the, what time is the that? Is that... The drinking with Charles. I'm mm -hmm. not sure um, okay. if uh, it it's just gonna be. I think it's me, Charles, and Ramon. Oh, okay, cool. And then we're gonna see if we can get Hugo. If you wanna come, let yeah. me know. We'll, yeah, we'll absolutely. Invite you. But um, okay, so we were just we were, we were just going through the very introduction of Lady Veins, 
in this book oh, cool. um, who I've really enjoyed while, while I've been narrating. And Annie, of course, is taking her um, her role. But we were we were trying to work it out so that she is different from both Levy and from um, uh, Yarlin. And by okay. the way, oh, yeah. and Yarlin's grown up now. She's no longer a little girl. Oh yeah, yeah. Yarlin's the little, the tiny vampire. Yeah, yep. yeah. But, but I think that tiny you can, I, I think that you can still bring the intensity that you brought from that first performance of Yarlin, which was fucking amazing. By the way, I don't know totally. how, how many of you have not listened to Dungeon Lord Three. Shame on you. <laughs> um, you should go listen to it because, like, ever since. I don't know. Like, I think the first book in the series was great and it was a great introduction to Annie. But then book two, she basically took over the whole thing because she's Levy. Yeah. And Levy's like, Levy's like the shining, hilarious <laughs> character in, in this series that really livens things up. I mean, her and Alder make this great team. But uh, Yarlin was this role where, okay, she this, she's this child-sized vampire because she's been deteriorating in her coffin for so long. Is that that's the reason, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but in this book, she's back and she's aged a bit. She's fed enough to where she's she's an adult size now. And so, uh, basically, what Annie did with Yarl, excuse me, Yarlin's voice. They're both from um uh what is what is lotia Lotia. lotia. um yep. so they both have like this russian sound to their accents um so to really differentiate them uh yarlin not only was higher pitched obviously for being a little girl <laughs> but she had way more dramatic energy and so i think it's still going to be pretty easy for you to differentiate her from Levy once we get started on this book but yeah, now we're we're introducing another very powerful, dramatic, low teen character. Yeah, uh, Lady Veins, right? Well, I've yeah, she's very dramatic. Nice and low. Yeah, so so we we had to work out her accent. We flattened out some of that Russian um, accent. We took out some of that Enough. that character grit that uh, Lady's got Enough. that ah, that kind of buzz Enough. in her voice, um, and. Yeah, she's deeper. Could it, old. could it work like where her natural voice is kind of soft? You know, like she's like she doesn't have to. She's got so much power that she's like enough. Doom of this, killer of that, killer of that. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. Yeah, I, I think that could that could work. Doom too. of this, she's not, you know, killer she's, of that. We um, all know my she's, titles. Let's she's not really on. a seductress type of character, but she's definitely got a lot of charisma, and mo most of that is, is like intimidating yes. charisma. Enough. Like a uh, warlord's charisma, maybe. Enough. Do you have like, a Do you have a uh, a character in mind, Hugo? Like a like a somebody from a movie or somebody that I could listen to? Um, I don't. Maybe I can get you a picture. I mean, it's okay. basically like Count Dracula, but you uh... Enough. Enough. Doom of this, killer of that. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Yeah. Um, Let's get on with it. I I, I like that. I, I feel like she's laid back and confident with without being lazy sounding or anything. Right, right. Okay. You know, like totally. Like just just sick of the pomp and circumstance and just sick of all all the the um what's the word uh surface level um surface level. Uh, uh sick sick of the <laughs> come on someone help me uh <laughs> like um presumption Pre presumption oh, yeah yeah, yeah she, she's well, well past that, past the politics yeah. of court. She's a, a warrior. She's tired of everything yeah. except uh, fighting. Yeah, she yeah fighting. She wants to get back to being evil. Damn it! So, <laughs> I want to get back to being evil. Damn it! So we are in. Uh, so enough. Um, Hugo, could you please give us uh, a little overview of how you feel about this particular book um, in the series? How how it 
how it makes you feel compared to the rest rest of the books and uh what your process has been lately because it's been a long time like yeah. so you you released this one one month ago or two months ago about a month and a half ago. month about a month and a half yeah. but book three came out man like at the end of last year right yeah about eight months ago oh about eight took... months okay so yeah. so okay earlier this year um but it's it's been a while and it it seems like the books keep getting bigger right yeah yeah this, this one's uh more than yeah about twice the length of the first one mm-hmm. it's w- way harder to it was way har- harder to write because the plot g- keeps getting more uh, complicated and the characters uh, need to well as an author you need to keep track of all their different objectives how they are evolving uh, as time goes on so yeah way more demanding uh I still feel I could have written it a bit faster. I hope to, the next book uh, comes out slightly faster than this one. But still, it was uh, challenging in a fun way. Like when you get in a very complex puzzle that you really enjoy solving. So mm-hmm. you sweat while while you're at, at it. But once it's, it's done and you feel how it came out together, you feel, well, really satisfied. Yeah, um, I'm definitely feeling like um, you're improving a lot, like as a, as an author too, like through through this book. Um, just you know, th- scenes just feel a little bit more evocative. Um, the the character, like the voices for each character, are very prominent and easy to distinguish. Like I, Actually, I feel like you guys helped me a lot with that. Uh, when I hear hear Lavi's voices, I hear it in Annie's voice. So oh, that's nice. cool. Yeah, you helped a lot with that. Nice. Yay. Well, um, yeah, uh, I, it definitely shows. You know, these these characters are really digging in, and uh, they feel. I feel like I'm revisiting old friends. You know, uh, coming back to this book and playing them. Obviously, that's like uh, Alder keeps getting more fun to play personally. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. Uh, what. So where we're at in the book, we are now introducing Lady Vane. Let's do that enough line one more time just to get us rolling in here. Enough. Called a woman's voice from above the stairs. Doom of this, killer of that. We all know my titles. Let's get on with it. Vane's strolled down the stairs. She had the look of someone who had grown tired of everyone's shit a long time ago. Her dress was a fine Lothian cut, but she looked wrong in it, and Ed suspected she felt uncomfortable in anything but armor. Her body was a map of old scars running along muscles like steel cords. There were white bumps of skin that had been sewn like patches to cover missing chunks of meat on her legs. Her eyes blazed perennial eldritch green, her face was severe, and her nose looked like it had been broken and resettled many times. Although she seemed to be somewhere in her mid-thirties, her short black hair was streaked with white, and the corners of her eyes were wrinkled. Ed tried to read her character sheet the instant he saw her. His mouth ran dry. It was completely hidden from him, something that hadn't happened in a long, long time. Not even the dungeon lord with two thousand points next to Vane's could hide all of it, but she did. Sure, she could have used anti-scrying magic, but something told Ed she hadn't. Vane's was the real deal, a living legend, larger than life. Yarlin had estimated her experience points to be around four or five thousand, if not more. Tell Zamor could have been the weakest of the regents, but his lineup included the two most powerful dungeon lords around. Am I supposed to go against those two? Ed thought grimly. She may look like an old, mean bitch, Zorander said quietly. But a word of advice. Do not fight Vanes under any circumstances. She is on a different level entirely. If she comes our way during the endeavor, we avoid her. If she beats us to Tillman's office, let her keep it. If we get in her way, surrender. She once tore the arm off the Inquisitor and beat him to death with it before he could bleed out on his own. Zoraner looked ill. She seemed as afraid of Vanes as the Heligians were. Some say Vanes is the last of her kind, the last survivor of the old generation of dungeon lords. 
She is cruel and violent and powerful. If you ask me, it may be for the best she's the only one remaining. Looking at Vane's scars, Ed had to agree with Zorander. He wouldn't be fighting her if he could help it. Okay, so this is... My friend. Yeah. My friends. The dungeon lady said as she reached her seat. My family. My family. We all know why we are here. So let's pretend to be civil for a night. So let's pretend to be civil for a night. We'll be able to butcher each other to our heart's content in the endeavor soon enough. Okay, let's... All right. Let's try we'll some more of that. Each other. Yeah, let's try some more of that laid back. Like, let's try. So let's pretend school. to be civil for a night. Yeah. We'll be able to butcher each other to our heart's content in the endeavor soon enough. You could. Let's try like point eight soon times enough. speed. Point eight times the speed. Okay. My friends, my family, we all know why we are here. So let's pretend to be civil for a night. We'll be able to butcher each other to our heart's content in the endeavor soon enough. In the endeavor. We'll be able to butcher each other to de Sorry. We'll be able to butcher each other to our heart's content in the endeavor soon enough. She grabbed a gauche brass goblet and took a long, impolite swig. One more thing. I have an introduction to make. Please stand for Argent Plane Shifter. Plane Shifter. Haran's Chosen. The newest addition to our beloved Dark Family. A few younger dungeon lords rose dubiously, because the spot where Fane's veins had turned to was empty. They didn't wait for long. Ed saw how reality rippled next to the table, raw magical energies coalescing in complex patterns too fast for the eye to comprehend, until a natural portal manifested with a crackle of lightning that danced through the nearest metal cutlery. Whispers of awe filled the room. Stable portals, those that didn't need a ley line or dungeon magic to exist, were a powerful type of divine magic with only one known user, the boatman himself. Murmurs envoy across all realities. This ripple led to a room in which, in what seemed to be the second floor of the palace. <clears throat> Excuse me. A blonde man stepped through. A Haligian, possibly, wearing a fitted black shirt and trousers and a wide red belt. Something in Argent roused a hint of recognition in Ed. Had he seen this guy somewhere before? He flicked through Argent's character sheet and was mostly unimpressed. All right, we're going to skip the character sheet. Ah, a living portal user, whispered Zorander in awe. The things I could do with that power at my command. Ed guessed that he had just joined Steros in the list of Zorander's forgotten prospects. The plane shifter faced the dungeon lords, looking nervous and out of place. His body language screamed, foreigner. I am r I mean, Argent P Plane Shifter. Uh, may your nights be exciting and pleasing to the dark, he said, mistaking a formal Lotian farewell for a greeting. Ed felt a pang of sympathy for that poor guy. Ed's first night in Ivalis, he had, he had had to deal with angry Batplins, a table full of some of the most dangerous Ivalian beings was another thing entirely. Still, I'm sure I recognize him from somewhere. Perhaps some of the meetings with Undercity's nobility? But that was impossible, as Argent was a new arrival. He decided to have a chat with Haran's champion as soon as possible and figure things out. Argent's low stats made him suspicious, though. He wasn't in any way ready for the endeavor. The only explanation was that Heron was hoping Veins would carry him to victory. Veins, apparently, had come to the same conclusion. Please treat Argent the same as you would treat any of us, she said. One of the Bone Lords laughed at that, 
and Ed could swear Vane's flashed a dry grin for an instant as Argent nervously sat between her and the other Ember Lord. Now, I bet you are hungry as... I bet you are as hungry as I am. The pact of truce I made with each of you compels me to protect your food and drink the same way I would my own. So eat to your heart's content. All right, so... I so think eat to end... your heart's content. Yeah, I like it. All right, so we're going to... We're going to stop that scene here. Um, I Because I want to uh, go meet... Go visit some of the characters that I miss. Um, okay, so I think for her voice, I think we should keep working on it a little bit. I think that there's more that we can do to... To layer back some more. But I, I think you're you're getting at least the attitude right, and yeah. Um, so, Hugo, is there a scene that you would like to hear us narrate with, preferably with Lavi and Alder, maybe? Hmm. There are a couple. Let me check my manuscript. Uh what's the Spravesca chapter? No, they're not together in that one. Are they? They're kind of. Uh... Oh, yeah, they are not aware. Without doing this for mm. uh, It's not a, a, a chapter with, with Alder, but Lavi has a really uh, interesting, I think, scene wh when she is uh, building her main project for this book. Okay. Oh, the part the part where uh, out on the, the top of the tower? Uh... I th I think it's uh when she's gathering the cursed items. Oh, are you talking about the part where she's in her new shop? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah. That that scene is hilarious. Um, <laughs> let's see. Where is that? Let me see if I can find it. What what's what's the name of the dude who she took it from? <laughs> That's how we'd uh, be able to find it. Yeah, no, no, no. That was that was my favorite scene in book three. And if you guys remember, if you've listened to it, uh, you would remember that's the scene where I put the uh, the music for Lady's yeah. shopping spree. Yeah, that's like the second part of that of that scene. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Let's see. Um... I'm all, almost there. Better late than never. Yep. Person this whose is... name I can't, don't know how to pronounce. It's in the oh. schemes chapter. Schemes. I think. And I'm just as pleased with your presence here as I am with the presence of all the people whose names I do know how to pronounce. Chapter 15. And I will know how to pronounce your name as soon as somebody tells me how to. <laughs> I'll keep the secret for now. <laughs> You're going to make me beg for it, aren't you? <laughs> okay, so there. here's a part where she's talking to basic introduction. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. that's is, that the part, is that the part you want? You want Give me a, a words to search. Is that the the scene you want us to do? Uh, it's the the first one. Uh, when when she's uh stepping inside the the store. Oh, okay. Hold on. So it's it's actually a little bit after that then. That plan. We got pre issue event of matter endeavor. Okay. Um, I found, okay, it's after this one. Yep, it's uh, in the schemes chapter. So chapter 15? Yep. Um, man. Or I mean, it I should, don't think it so. We know, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Maybe that's, it's, that's it, I, I, I think it's uh, chapter 16. 
Um, why is someone knocking on my door? Oh, you're right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the last scene from chapter 16. Okay, one second, guys. I'll be right back. Hmm. Uh-oh. I hope it's not like a crazy uh, psycho clown killer. Oh, I'm just reading a uh, it pro of Stephen King. I was just reading your mind. Ooh. Ben. Nice. So, chapter I went to chapter 17. Chapter to go backwards, but so, it seems like it's, it's a bit faster. Yeah, just go Some, up a bit. Uh, Give me a can... word thing to search or Search um, a, a, yep. bell chime. a bell chime. A bell chime. All right. Sorry, guys. That took so long. But uh, okay. A bell chime. I sh I'm thinking about bell peppers and chives. I must be hungry. <laughs> I'm definitely hungry. Bell peppers and chives. Found it. All right. Here a bell goes. chimed as the door to the clearance. Yeah. To the cl clearance. Okay. So I wasn't sure how to narrate this 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 quite right because the the so basically what the narrator is doing is reading the sign on reading the shingle basically of the stop, and it uh, used to be called Clarence Cauldron's Treble or Clarence Cauldron's Runes and Relics, relics. Yep. but in the text Clarence Cauldron's is is crossed out and tr it's been replaced with trebles trebles or treville uh let's say treble yeah so uh, i can't remember how i narrated it before i i had to figure out a way i think it worked so all the way back to dungeon lord one i think that's the last time we used lavi's last name oh is, is that lady yeah. lady oh yeah that's right that's right um okay I think it's Treville then. I might have to change that in, in the audiobook. Um, okay. So let me try and narrate it as best I can. A bell chimed as the door to Treville's runes and relics, formerly Clarence Cauldron's, summer sale opened, and Levy strolled in with the unmistakable swagger of someone who owns the place and everything in it, <laughs> including the bell. The place had changed much since Levy had taken over. The mysterious piles of random objects had been replaced by neatly ordered rows with detailed signs explaining what each item did. A line of half a dozen people, mostly old witches and twitchy apprentices, waited patiently with baskets and shopping bags in front of the counter where Clarence Cauldron carefully counted a long pile. A tall pi uh, a large pile, it should say large, a large pile of Vifara pennies. Cauldron had never looked better. He was dressed in a smooth black suit with no dandruff, had a gnomish pocket, wa pocket watch hanging from a silver chain, and his shoes were of polished red drake leather. Polished red drake leather with steel tips. His bald, oversized head was almost transparent, as if he could disappear at any time. Three miserable-looking eyes looked down at the pile of pennies. Levy walked past a fireproof candle, and while waiting for the line to clear up, she thumbed a small tin locket that was cursed to make its owner forget what he was about to do when he entered a room. She decided to keep it, break it down, and see if she could modify that curse to create defenses for the haunt. At the very least, she could annoy Alder with it. Nice scarf! A Haligian swamp witch told Levy as she got behind her in line. Thanks, Levy said caressing proudly the Martin spirit she kept shackled to the neck of her dress. The ghost napped peacefully, keeping her body fresh in the Zovian heat. I summoned it myself. Spirit fashion is for sure the next big thing, you know. The swamp witch paid eight Vifaras and a penny for a ring of dwarven liver. Management policy requires that I inform you the ring is cursed to appear in the finger of uh, someone who really needs to get drunk. Then makes them immune to alcohol, alcohol intoxication. Unless you take measures to keep it from disappearing, it will leave your person as soon as you no longer need a drink. If you wish to remove it before that, you will need a curse-breaking ritual, or somehow be completely immune to dark magic. That's fine. I only need it for that hag Hilda's birthday party next week. The woman said. Ah, 
the face she's gonna make. <laughs> Lavy set the tin locket on the table and handled Cauldron. Handed Cauldron, who hadn't looked up, a couple pennies. You're short, eleven nope, by far. Nope, oh, sorry. Um, uh, you're short, eleven by fars and a half, the shopkeeper said. Owner's discount, Lavy said nonchalantly as she pocketed the item. The shopkeeper's mercurial skin swirled in alarm as he recognized the voice and looked up. Master Lavina, you're here? Oh, gods, help me! Lavy threw a glance over her shoulder to make sure no haunted minion was around. <clears throat> Come on, Clarence. How have I ever done... How have I ever done you wrong? Your store is doing amazing since you kindly sold it to me. You should thank me and cherish me, not fear me. Sold you my store? Your thugs threatened me until I had to sell all my stock to you at a clearance, forcing me into debt. Then you bought the store for a pittance. Well, hate the game, not the player, Lady said, shrugging. I also bought your debt to the I also bought your debt to the bank, so you're welcome. Without my help, some ogre may have thrown you out of the citadel without a floating buff or soften. Sorry. <laughs> we, uh, without my help, some ogre may have thrown you out of the citadel without a floating buff to soften the fall. My family has sold cursed items to the unwary for generations. All my <laughs> life, I dreamed of amassing riches by teaching people moral lessons through carefully selected cursed stock to match their flaws in character. <laughs> the man pitifully buried his face in his hands. But now look at me, forced to work at my own store, little more than a slave. Whoa, Lady said quickly. We don't use we don't use that word around here. It usually ended with someone fed to Yarlin, and it sure as hell wouldn't be Lavy. <clears throat> You're a proud travels, runes, and relics associate, Clarence, with a nice salary and dental better than you had before. Don't make me send sorry. Don't make send you to the Don't make yeah, me send I you don't... to the motivational retreat again. Cauldron's lips trembled. The retreat? Please the motivational that. retreat. <laughs> Forget I said anything. How can this associate be of assistance, Master Lavina? Now, that's the spirit. Did our agents find the item I asked for in my last letter? Of course, Master Lavina. Allow me to fetch it at once. <laughs> he hurried to the back. Levy noted. L Levy nodded in approval. Cauldron had the potential to provide a satisfactory customer service. He just needed to be properly motivated. She made a mental note to talk with the Runes and Relics HR department about that. Perhaps, <clears throat> perhaps they, perhaps they could come up with a motivational chant the associates could sign at the start of each day, add a couple discreet suggestion canticles, enchant the floor of the back store, and presto, you had a ritual to magically keep associates happy. Lavy grinned. She was in her element, dealing with the accursed magics of customer service. Here. Cauldron said, setting a box on the counter, sealed with leather straps engraved in shoddy silver runes and prayers of protection. Lavy eyed the handiwork with a critical eye. Whoever had made those runes needed to grind their skills way higher. The Canopy of Quebenef, a nasty piece of Akathunian history, courtesy of your friends, the Adventurer's Guild. This bad boy not only contains the undead brain of Grand Vizier Quebenef, ever hungry to siphon knowledge from the mind of the unwary. It also makes for excellent table decoration. The box seemed to lie in wait, like a predator wetting its lips. Perfect, Levy said. It is just what I need. She handed the shopkeeper a bag full of coins to cover the expense. Cauldron looked sullen. It is what you think you want, he said sadly. But... What you really need is to learn a moral lesson about greed and humility. <laughs> Lavy grabbed the box, which was not all that heavy. Her carriage waited for her outside. As she turned to leave, she said over her shoulder, Greed, right? Didn't you say you dreamed about amassing riches? Because it seems like I granted 
your wish, while at the same time teaching you to, uh, an important moral lesson about humanity. Humility. 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 Realization struck the shop shopkeeper like a sack of bricks. Oh, fuck me! Levy left her store, closing the door behind her, carrying the canopy on in one arm. Diviner Folk, the abneteer, waited for her floating next to her carriage. Did you find everything you looked for? He asked pleasantly. She grinned and raised the box so he could see. Okay, and then this joke you won't get unless you... Uh, you have to, to, you have to know about the brief introduction um, scene, which is pretty fucking funny. But yeah, so Levy, back in her element, um, yep. being manipulative and greedy and adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh any other let's see i think i think we're about out of time um sorry guys again about the very messy start uh we're gonna try and get hugo on to drinking with charles on saturday yeah absolutely and, and don't um, forget to tune in on friday friday we, we have... really for really real do do Nygmas. do yes Nygmas. do do nigmas do do nigmas online online nice. um, we're gonna do do nigmas online <laughs> we're gonna do it so Don't think um, we won't thanks so much guys for coming and hanging out thank you so much hugo for thank him, you. Him, like the for, for coming and um yeah we'll talk to you guys again soon i'm almost i'm i'm oh, more than halfway done with dungeon lord 4 as far as narrating and getting it recorded Wing um, you. then i'm sending it to annie then we're sending it to doki dory so dory sax Doki Dory's for Doki Dory. Screaming. Never mind. Screaming. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah. I'll, we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys again soon. Cool. It was great. Thank you. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye, Wenyu. Bye.